All right, so I just got this Case 930 series tractor fired up for the first time probably a month or so. And it seems to be running really well. It does have oil pressure after all, which I'm really relieved about because there was some uh, uncertainty about that. And now I guess the next thing to do is go through and do pretty much all the maintenance that this thing could possibly have done to it. The reason for this is I always say that um, trying to get the average person to maintain farm equipment it's like trying to convince them to pay the extra $20 for the American-made version of something or the higher quality version that'll last longer, even if it's cheaper in the long run. They just won't. That's all there is to it. Now, there's exceptions to every rule, but uh, those exceptions are not people who I've typically bought farm equipment from. Anyway, this might be better than uh, I'm giving it credit for because the guy I bought this from, I think he actually did take pretty good care of it. He said he just put brand new fuel filters in it and I decided to double check that just because you can never be too safe and sure enough these things are pretty much mint condition. Um, yeah, I don't really see any signs of abuse on this but he only had it for like a handful of months and the tractor's like from the Vietnam era so <laughs> we don't really know what it's seen. I guess, first things first, I want to start out with the coolant system because I installed this uh, temperature gauge and when I did, you know, I lost probably a couple water so, so I went to replace it and it was, it was really bad, it was like liquid topsoil almost, I mean it's terrible, I don't think there's even any antifreeze in there, I think it's just nasty water. So we're going to drain that, fill it up with the hose, drain that, do this probably two or three times and then I'll buy some actual antifreeze and some distilled water that will go in there. And uh, I also want to make it a point to adjust the valves on this because something in that midsection sounds a little rattly. And from there, I guess that leaves the back end which I'm sure is just going to be absolutely revolting because I've looked at this and the oil in here is... Oh my goodness. Yeah, okay. Well, let's see what happens. Ugh. Checking over that power steering fluid and we have a blown out, uh, seemingly no-name filter. Hopefully the replacement I bought's gonna fit. The fluid, I gotta get this in the pan here. The fluid itself does not look that bad, but I'm concerned because there's probably pieces of that blown out filter uh, that have been pumped all throughout the hydraulic system for the power steering, but the good news is someone saved a whole two dollars over buying the Wix filter or whatever. That's totally worth it. I mean this fluid looks a little dark, I'm not gonna lie, but it doesn't look bad. I'm amazed that radiator's still draining. I popped that hose off probably like 10 minutes ago at this point. Still splooging. Alright, I am really hoping that the filter I bought will fit this, but to be honest, having no filter is superior to having that blown out one. At least if there's not any filter, we don't have to worry about pumping. Okay. If, at least if there's no filter, we don't have to worry about pumping uh, filter chunks through the system. Oh, there's some sediment down in there. I'm amazed it works at all, to be honest. That's a testament to the quality of these old behemoths. However, I will say that so I'm told, all right, I found my spring. Uh, from the research I've done, the power steering on these was not that good even when they're new. And what a lot of people do that are more uh, inclined about hydraulic knowledge than I am, is they will delete this entire system and run it off the tractor's rear hydraulics, you know, for lack of a better term. Which is how new tractors are. That's how my new Kubota is, I'm pretty sure. They say it works fine as long as you put in a priority valve. Otherwise, uh, the steering lacks, but to be fair, the steering on these lack even when they're new, so whatever. And the good news is, because the fluid wasn't that bad, I'm not going to try to like flush it all, which normally I would. Just it really doesn't look like there's anything wrong with it. So I don't know, I might regret that later. It is good that the power steering has its very own uh, belt, however, because the system, as mentioned, is not really the greatest. If something happens to it, hopefully you can still manhandle that steering around, at least till the end of the day or whatever, and you can get a new belt. Come on. Yeah, you know, it's really not that bad in there. Yeah, a little bit of gunk, nothing too terrible. This is a Fleet Guard HF6007, which is evidently just a thing to have here. wonder if it goes like that or like that. Um, okay, it's got to be like, it's 
got to be like this. Because that leaves space for this whole spring deal up here to push down on. Yeah, I think we just... Oh! Don't want to be losing that. Does this go like that? Yeah, it goes like that. I think. That's the way mine's going. Got to stab around in here until I find that hole in the bottom of this. Go. Brilliant. I like it. Okay, hopefully now this thing can actually... I don't know, dare I say breathe? It can drink? There, it can <laughs> It can drink now properly. Instead of just getting what came through that collapsed filter. Alright, where's my goop? Gotta dump as much all over the tractor as possible. Ow! And all over the front of it, for good measure. Oh goodness, they were right. I can't do anything right. Okay, let's try that. Still not measuring on the thingamajigger. You guys probably don't care. It's a little high. Let me run this. There might be some uh, pieces of filter in the system or some air or something. We'll check that again and I'll find the turkey baser and suck some out if necessary. But that might or might not go down. All right, so I just popped that uh, lower radiator hose back on and I'm very happy to announce, come on, get in there. Do, 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 do. I have the train of thought of my dog. Okay, anyway, yeah, that's it. I'm very happy to announce that uh, these radiator hoses are actually in very good shape. This is not cheap rubber. This is like the good automotive stuff. And it looks pretty new, and even the hose clamp on it looks pretty new. And it matches the upper hose right there. So this is a really good sign, because that means that uh, someone probably replaced them both. It's been done within the last handful of years, so that's one less thing I have to worry about. And since they replaced them both, it might mean, and you can never really be sure with this kind of thing, it might mean they were really willing to go the extra mile making sure this thing uh, has proper maintenance which is good. Uh, unfortunately, it has received many, many coats of paint and it is a truly atrocious machine. So perhaps they just felt sorry for it, but whatever, as long as the strength continues, I'm happy to take what I can get. So the cooling system in this holds something like 10 and a half gallons of liquid. I'm gonna let it fill up and sit while we do the valves and hopefully like burp some bubbles out and then we'll top it off, we'll top it off before we fire this thing up. All that stuff that came out of here was so gross. <laughs> it was really nasty. Oh, it's bubbling. Nope, it'll take more. Okay, that time it didn't go down. Might be ready to roll. Alright, so this engine, as you can see, is of a little bit of a different design. It is a 401 cubic inch, and it's about 6.5 liter, six cylinder diesel, and uh, it basically has three heads, which is really cool. That's a very unique design uh, to me. I mean, I don't really know what the heck I'm talking about here, but I like it. And so the reason for that is if something goes wrong with one of them, you don't have to replace essentially six cylinders worth of heads. You can just remove, fix, and replace two, and it's that much easier. Uh, so yeah, I want to check the valve clearance in this thing. Because something sounds a little rattly in this area. I don't know if it's, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're all going to be out of adjustment. Hopefully I'm wrong. But I'm expecting them all to be out of adjustment, or perhaps this thing will need a couple new injectors. I don't know. I can still get them, like I can find them on the internet, so it's not that big of a deal. But I would prefer if it was just an adjustment. Anyway, man, I am really excited about this. I'm cautiously optimistic about the mechanical condition of this tractor, as ugly as it might be on the outside. It'd be pretty cool, because a tractor this size, new, is probably 80 grand if I had to guess for whatever the modern equivalent of this is and I have like a 40th of that in this <laughs> so if we have to fix a few things to 
be honest, even if it needs a complete engine rebuild, which it might with all that smoke, uh, that's not really the end of the world. And I am really enjoying working on this. Place your bets now in the comments as to how much sludge and filth we're going to find on the inside of this. Or perhaps it's actually seen regular oil changes. That's what I hope to find. That's probably not come loose in a while. Wherever I go, there I must also use welding tools in inappropriate ways. Oh, that was loud. Now this is hacked even by my standards. Got a proper hammer. The valve covers on this are really on, so we're probably going to have to pry them off. So I'm going to try to remove this breather tube first. I didn't want to because it's all, I always prefer not taking things apart any more than necessary. I had a reasonable expectation this was sealing properly before, and now we're going to have to mess with it so we know it's sealing again when we're done, but uh, that's just the way it is. Also, I'm gonna have to throw a tarp over this unless I get it back together tonight. What would really be great is if I had like a building or something so you know that I can work on stuff in. I'd really like that right about now. That sounds amazing. Oof. Those are some old nasty rubber things. Man, these valve covers are really on here. Think it pop? Yeah, we're good. That's yeah, really not that bad. There is definitely some sludge in here, but it's really not that bad. Look, you can even see bare metal on this one still. Not even any real sludge. Definitely some gunk? What is that? Is that like. Oof. Oh, oh, flaky mess. This thing's definitely an example of a tractor that needs to be run like flat out for 100 hours and have the oil changed in it. All right, there's my screwdriver. Oh, that's like two, three times what it should be. That one doesn't seem that bad. I haven't done this in a while, so hopefully I can remember. Look away, keyboard commandos. Goodness, that is tight. All right, we're good. Good. I don't really need to say that, but it makes me feel better. Good. <laughs> and good. All right, I guess it was just the one that was really bad. Some people can do this when the engine's running. I'm not that skilled. Right there. Yeah, that's good. Now this one. Yeah, that one was pretty loosey-goosey. This one's got some major sludge action. Because it's hard to move this feeler the way that it's supposed to be moved. Alright, now we need to spin the engine so there's no tension on either of these. And I really hope this thing doesn't start. I'm not sure if that's neutral or not, so I'm doing it from the seat. That might have been enough. Nope. Oh. Yeah. This one's really tight, even after I whacked the wrench with a 2x4. I'm going to say there is good. I like it. Goodness, that is on there well. Man, that is... 
that is on there. I don't want to pry on this because then the gasket surfaces may or may not read, won't seal properly. Man, I'm hitting this pretty hard at this point. Nothing's happening. I might have to pry. Okay, well, in goes the screwdriver, I guess. I'm glad I stopped reading comments because I'm sure this is going to generate some rage. Okay, it's crack a lackalin. Okay, I think we're good. It just doesn't come off. Okay. All right, this is the one that I'm anxious about because one of these cylinders is a little loud. Looks just like the other one. There's some milky, rusty, nasty stuff in here. I guess some water got in the engine or something. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they're a little loose, but it's not bad. This thing might be needing an injector. That might be what the lesson to learn from this is. Okay, that's weird. This one does not seem to have enough adjustment. I think this is a cylinder causing problems. And it's too tight up here. I wonder what that means. Yeah, it's compressing the valve now. That's really strange. Let's bump this engine, see if that... It might not just be positioned correctly. That's better. All right, I'm pretty sure that was a false alarm. It's definitely not under tension from the engine, or from the camshaft, rather. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one's. Man, this is weird. Okay. Well, it's better than it was. But it is still way too tight. But it's just it has nothing else left to give. That's really weird. I wonder if the camshafts like had gunk melt to it or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's tighter than it should be for real. What in the world? This one's the same way. Okay, well I'm gonna have to research what problems with an engine can cause it not to have enough adjustment in the valves. Um, and in the meantime, we're just gonna set these as loose as possible. I mean, I don't, what else am I gonna do, really? Remember kids, anything can be a hammer and most things can be a pry bar. All right, so the problem with this, with what's going on here, is that I cannot adjust the adjuster to the required clearance necessary. It does not go loose enough, which is very weird because you would think on an older piece of equipment you'd have the opposite problem, whereas everything is loosened up with age and with wear and tear, so you can't get it tight enough. With this, I cannot get it loose enough. So this is very strange. This is outside my realm of expertise. It's only on two valves out of, uh, you know, what, 12 total. And so it doesn't seem that bad, but I guess we're just going to have to bother Mechanic Steve and try whatever he says. But regardless, the rest of them are adjusted properly. Okay, so that's that. Um, yeah, this is going to be tomorrow's project. Overall though, I will say I'm pleasantly surprised by the condition of this tractor. It seems like it has had maintenance done, and at least we've seen the inside of part of the engine. I realize it's just the very top, but it 
doesn't look that bad. It is not the cleanest I've ever seen. The cleanest old tractor engine I've ever seen is probably a tie between the Zetter, which isn't that old, and the Ford 820, because that thing is just immaculate on the inside. But it's not that bad. So let's see what happens tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and uh, I am very, very happy that this thing is running as well as it is, and that I haven't found anything major yet.